Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord God. We lift up your name. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Trinidad. Good morning from Trinidad. Y'all check in as y'all coming in this morning. Tell me where you're from. Good morning, my God. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. Thank you for sharing. Mm. Yeah. For you, this place. Mm. Thank you, 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 thank you. Good morning. We are for you, this place. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Good morning, good morning. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> my God, I thank you. Thank you. Let your glory be in my life. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, thank you, thank you, Lord. It's not the wealth of things. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Daniel Hammer. I received that blessing. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We glorify you, Father God. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. And we just thank you, Father God, for your word on this day. We thank you for your truth being revealed today. And we thank you for your people today. We thank you for your glory. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, uh, Florida. Come on. Leesburg, Florida. Thank you for that, Trina. I love knowing where y'all from. Y'all can share that this morning. Arlington, Texas. Good morning. Good morning, my male. Good morning. Good morning, Brian, Arkansas. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My God, I thank you. Come on, Tamika in Alabama. Good morning, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Insta. Hey, Facebook. Good morning to YouTube. This will be uploaded a little bit later. I am just so grateful this morning. Well, welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha. I am Lakeisha M. Johnson, a.k.a. LMJ, and we are in this place this morning, and I just wish you the best morning ever. Um, as you're coming in, feel free to share with us where you're from. Um, I promise you we are getting the gospel throughout the world. The podcast 
Um, and we podcast, I think, over 10 different um, places. We're on Apple. We're on Google. We have over, off, it's, the podcast has been up only a little bit over a year. And we have almost 18,000 listens on the podcast, almost 18,000 listens. So people don't just listen live online. Pe people listen on Stitcher and I think on Spotify and on Google and Apple and several other platforms. So the podcast is almost up to 18,000 listens and oh, a little bit over a year. So I'm super excited about God growing the podcast. So if you want to work out, you can listen via podcast. We're on Google Play, um, and I'm just excited about what God is doing to get the gospel absolutely everywhere. Our goal is for, we coming after one, our goal is to have the gospel preached in every city, state, nation, and world, that we are in every home, so that everyone is living in what the truth, the truth of word, the word of God, that, that they know who Jesus is. We want to get Jesus to everyone, that they know who Jesus is. And that they know about the kingdom of God and that the kingdom of God is at hand. And so I am just grateful for the opportunity to lead this, right? I'm not in charge of it. My God, I received that, Tammy. Don't. I received that. Um, and so that is our goal, our mission to get the gospel throughout the world so that everyone understands how much God loves them and how much God has in store for them in this life and the life to come. So thank you for all of you. Every time you share the devotional, um, it just gets to God everywhere. What's up, Magnolia? Good morning, Magnolia. Um, LMJ Ministries is based in, based in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm going to speak that boldly. It is based in Little Rock, Arkansas. So for those of you, this is your first time on. We welcome you and we are grateful to worship with you. We have been in such a mighty and a powerful series. God has been um, since last October. This devotional has been strategic from the beginning, but God has been um, I, God has been leading us significant and and growing us in grace and grow us in ministry. Um, that that song was. I'm sorry. I usually will say that. That song is Let Your Glory Fill This Place, and it's by T.D. Jakes and the Potter House. And I think Donnie McClurkin is singing sent, um, the lead. So um, thank you. Yep, YouTube is out there, too. YouTube is as well for those that want to see us. Um, we are also on the YouTube channel. And YouTube has almost three years of video, almost three years of video. Um, this month, coming up in March, Coffee and Conversations, LMJ Ministries will be three years old, three years. It's been three years since I've been in ministry full time. Um, June made my walk, but thir thir March was the declaration and when we started out. So we'll be three years in ministry in March, full time ministry. So I am, I am so grateful. I am so grateful for who and what God is and what God is doing. And I'm just grateful to be able to connect to you. I'm grateful for everything that God has just chosen um, to use this ministry for, and I couldn't do this without you. So let's pray. No, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Let's pray this morning. Um, let's pray this morning. Um, let's get into the word of God this morning. Um, I'm going to y'all lift up my vocal cords this morning. And um, let's just be where we need to be in Jesus this morning because Jesus is the final answer and Jesus is the reason and the path and the way to God is through Jesus. So we thank you, Father God, for <laughs> we thank you, Father God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for your word today. I thank you for your very presence today. I thank you for your peace today. I thank you, Father God, for your joy today. I thank you for your strength today. I thank you for your mercy today. And I thank you for your people today. I thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke, the anointing that's on my life, the grace, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we are repairs of the breach, that every time we preach the gospel, every time we share your word, Lord God, that someone is being healed, someone is being delivered, someone is be, being set free. So we bind everything 
thoughts, every spirit of distraction, anything that has been coming to us that's keeping us from walking into the fullness of our purpose in our marriage and our with our children and our ministry. Father God, we bind that spirit back to the pits of hell from which it came and we re, we submit ourselves to you. We submit ourselves in word and thought and deed and in action, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for renewing our mind, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, for teaching us the only path to you is through Jesus. So we thank you for Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are demonstrating, your, demonstrating yourself strong before the people today. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord God. I cast off every spirit of ir irritation, Lord God. I cast off every spirit of lack, doubt, poverty. Father God, I bind it back to the pits of hell from which it goes, the spirit of irritation, you must go. I thank you, Lord God, that we rest in your truth, Lord God, that you said we had to be anxious for absolutely nothing, Lord God. Um, everything in prayer and supplication, making our requests known, Father God, and you are the God that answers us, Lord God. Anoint my vocal cords this morning. Let them be strong, Lord God. I thank you that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart, Father God, I'm <laughs> Father God is acceptable in your sight. Holy Spirit, only come and do what you can do. I yield. I yield the floor to you. Mm. I yield the floor to you. 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 So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you, 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 we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Second Corinthians, um, I'm gonna back up to the 14th verse. It says, But thank God He has He has made us his captives and continuous continues to lead us along in Christ's triumph, triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task as this? You see, we are not like the many hucksters who preach with, for personal profit. We preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that word today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that word today. That was 2 Corinthians, um, the second verse, starting at the 14th verse, declaring that we are ministers of the new covenant. And ministers of the new covenant don't preach the gospel for gain. They preach the gospel knowing that God is watching us. Thank you for that, Lord God. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, second Corinthians, this is second Corinthians, the third chapter in the 16th verse. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away for the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord and the Lord who is the spirit makes us more glory, more like him as we are changed into the glorious image. My God. And we have to receive this by the spirit. We have to receive what God is teaching us by the spirit um, and not by our flesh. Spiritual things don't necessarily make sense to us in our flesh, right? And so a lot of times we'll try to receive this by um, um, our mind. We'll try to receive this by what but you have to receive this you have to understand and receive this by the holy spirit this has to be the holy spirit right um so we thank you lord god for um the holy spirit right and what the holy spirit is doing to us and how the holy spirit is leading us 
I'm looking for one more scripture and I'm going to give you that to you so you can chew on those today and understanding that when it is not for profit and it is done by the spirit, then it looks a whole lot differently, right? And we have to understand by the spirit of God and not our flesh, not what we've been taught by religion and not by flesh. So we have to begin to understand by the spirit of God, not our flesh. Um, so we're going to get in the word today. And I named this devotional or God gave me the word for this devotional. Um, I titled this a chosen Gener generation. And I'm going to give you some scriptures and we're going to talk a little bit about Joseph. And we're really talking about our next generation, our children. And we're still in Ephesians 5. And in just a second, you're going to see how all of this is tied. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. You're going to see how all of this is tied together and how all of this makes sense. Because we were getting we're getting into being submitted, submitting the word of God, submitting to the word of God, submitting to our wives, submitting to their husbands, the role of the wife, the, our role as parents, and then what it says to us about our children. So this morning, we're going to talk about a chosen generation. I'm going to give you a little bit about Joseph today and how Joseph was chosen. And I hope you begin to understand all of this in your own life and how you begin to understand this for your children as well. Because a lot of times um, we don't understand our purpose. We don't understand what's going on with us. Romans 8 and 14 says, for all who are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God, right? Psalms 143 and 10 says, teach me to do your will for you are my God. Let your good spirit be, meet me on level ground. So for all of us that are led by God, right? Um, it's over in Corinthians where it tells us we're only going to know this um, by the spirit. We're only going to know this by the spirit. That's how we're going to know this. We're going to know this by the spirit. And so you're only going to be familiar with that, this through your spirit. So you've got to let your spirit lead so that you don't think what I'm giving you is weird because I'm only giving you the word of God. I'm only giving you what the word says. And so today we're going to talk about the chosen generation and we're going to talk a little bit about Joseph's life. And then I'm going to give you some scriptures to back this up. None of you were born by mistake. <laughs> None of you were born accidentally. None of you were, um, none of you um, are a tragedy. None of you, even if your parents had you out of wedlock. And I had to get this revelation for myself. Even if uh, you had a baby out of wedlock, even if you're a result of rape. And I know that's hard to conceive sometimes. I don't care what situation you were born into. You were not born by mistake. I don't care what situation your children were born into. There are no mistakes in God. I took a biology class. And when I took the biology class, um, I was the, the um, my science teacher, he wrote a little pen mark on the board and he said, our bodies have, he was explaining to us as women, he said, sometimes you can have a spontaneous miscarriage and not even know you were pregnant. He said, because it's the size of a pin drop. And when he showed me that on the board, it gave me fresh revelation of how no one was born by mistake. Like he showed me that he said, your body can have a spontaneous miscarriage. Like he had a pen drop on the board. He said, you can be pregnant and it could have been this big. And I was like, God, this is so intentional. Like this is so intentional. This lets me know that none of us were born. I am no born out of mistake. None of us were born by mistake you are very intentional about us right and so even for those of you that have had an abortion i don't want you to take a heavy on yourself i don't want you to let that take you to a place because sometimes we do things when we are not led by the spirit of god that do not make sense it doesn't add up it's not healthy it's not okay and we'll start letting the enemy take us to this place when we've already been washed in the blood and that's over with and that's done with. So don't let the enemy pull you into the place as God gives us revelation about our children and how important our children are. 
And so I want to give you just a little bit of Joseph's story, right? And then I want to give you the scriptures to help you understand your role as a parent, right? And I'll teach this, I'll teach this lesson to your kids. If you want me to teach a lesson to your kids, I think it's only befitting that I give a lesson for your kids on this. And I might do a separate video or a live this weekend giving this lesson to your kids and maybe you can watch the kids responsibility their mission in the family together as a family i'll do that i'll do a special live just for the kids so that they can understand and i'll bring my boys in maybe we can do that for you guys sunday evening and i'll bring my boys in and we will just talk about the responsibility also because remember this week we're on the mission. We're on the mission of the family. We're on the mission of what God was doing when he was helping us understand relationships. And so I want you to know that we are born so uniquely into purpose, right? And whether we get it or understand it or um, can identify what God is doing for us, we are all a part of a chosen generation. We are all purpose. We are all here intentionally and on, and on purpose. And God is just so significant to us. I'm not going to be irritated today. Father God, I just thank you. Father, we moved and cast off the spirit of irritation right now in Jesus name. And I thank you, Lord God, that we are focused. So, um, so I thank you, Lord God, um, for this example through Joseph, right? And there is so much significant meaning in Joseph. Y'all stay focused. There's so, so, so significant meaning in Joseph. And I'm just being honest with you. Um, as we begin to look at Joseph's life, we see how significant Joseph's life was set up, right? Um, his, his life was set up. Joseph, Joseph had a prison ministry. <laughs> he did. He had a prison ministry. Joseph was in prison and he had a prison ministry. He would begin to have a prison ministry. He would begin to be in prison and we will begin to see um, God work through Joseph, even in the unlikely situation. So even if you're a parent and you have a child in prison, your child can have a prison ministry. We are all chosen. We know Romans says that we work all things for our good, right? We work all things for our good. And so the story of Joseph is just a great drama in the Bible, right? A young man is favored by his father and, and is consequently he is hated by his brothers and his brothers conspire to rid themselves of Joseph and sell him as a slave to a caravan of Ishmaelites headed for Egypt, doing right by um, his Egyptian master, jo um, Joseph wins Potiphar's favor, which makes Joseph the most powerful man under his authority, Refa remaining faithful to um, his master by rejecting his wife's advances, right? Even though it looked like he was going to be in trouble, he, had, he rejected his advances, right? And even though she has Joseph falsely imprisoned, Joseph is still elevated again to the second highest position in the land. And then God uses Joseph, right? In a time of famine, in a time of drought to save his family. Well, if you know the story of Joseph, you know that Joseph had already, God had already given him a dream, right? Joseph, Joseph is Jacob or Israel's um, child, right? Israel has had two wives and two concubines and he has a plethora of children, but Joseph and his brother Benjamin are born of Joseph's favorite wife, which is Rachel. And so Jacob is very intentional, right? J J Jacob is very intentional. He's very intentional. He he's very intentional in how he loves Joseph. He's very intentional and what he does for Joseph. And I'm not saying it's wise. I don't ever think that it's wise that we favor one child over the other. And sometimes we as parents will do that. We will favor one child over the other. Perhaps that child is a little bit more nice or kind or 
responsible or respectful, but we will favor one child over the other. And I don't think God ever intentionally brought us in, brought, brought, give, gave us multiple kids for us to favor one child over the other. Now, do does every child require a different amount of attention? Yes, it does. Every child requires a different amount of, a, of a, attention, right? So, and, and every child requires something special and something different because each of them are born for a different purpose. Every child is born for a different purpose. And remember the mission this week is to understand what and who God is calling us to and to understand the relationships that we're tied to. So this today we're understanding the purpose of our children and how God has called our children and what God is calling our children to. So there are so many consuming factors that um, are connected to to why um, Joseph's brother hate him. They hate him because of how his dad treated him. Um, they also hated him because Joseph, and I believe even though he was out of timing and in his immaturity, he shared some things with his brothers that he should not have shared with his brothers, right? He didn't have the wisdom in him to ask God if he needed to share this with his brothers, if he needed to share this with his fathers. And so he shared with them that he would rule over them one day, right? And he also used to spy on them for his dad. He used to spy on them for his dad. And so at first they plot to kill Joseph and then Reuben intervenes and says, let's not, let's not, um, let's not kill them. Like, let's not take them out. Um, let's not take him out. Let's sell him off. And so they sell him off. And then we see him end up in a very favored situation. He, we see him in what seems like an unlikely situation. That's why I'm saying to you, even in a circumstance when it looks like your children are not on the right path, when it looks like your children are not in the right direction, when it looks like your children are not doing the things that they are supposed to do, it does not mean that glory, that God cannot get the glory out of their life. It is not. Some of us are called to very unique ministries, but because we as parents were not really necessarily always taught how to properly rear and raise our children because no one really taught us how to pray for their purpose, how to understand their personalities, how to get to know who they are. We will. And, and, and then we don't teach that amongst the siblings. Like if we have multiple kids, we don't, we don't know. We haven't been taught how to understand that each of you have a special gift. Sometimes your gifts will look the same. Sometimes your gifts will look very different. Like we didn't get the revelation. Yeah, it is Kim. It's their journey with God. We didn't get the revelation. And so I don't know who needs to hear this today, but even if you have a child in prison that keeps coming up in my spirit, God can give them a ministry in prison, right? And you're going to understand how much your prayers can impact that some of us were uniquely called to prison ministry. We're all, I mean, and the word tells us, did you visit those in prison? And we, he isn't talking about just those that are not in Christ Jesus. Like there is a ministry for those of you that are called specifically to the prisons, right? And, and even for parents, there are parents that may be called to the prison and God knows how to get the glory out of our worst situation. He does, he does, he does, he does. He can get the glory. So even if you have brothers or sisters, that is not the end of their story because they're locked up. Joseph is in an unlikely situation and he is locked up, right? But even in, in his ability to be locked up because he was honored, because he honored God, because he honored, um, he understood submission. He honored leadership. God favored him. And in the most likely situation, he would go from the pit to the palace. He would go from the pit to the palace. And so stop thinking that because your kids or your grandkids make grave mistakes or do stupid things that your prayers cannot change the direction of what needs to happen next. And I'm going to give you scripture to, to, to back this up so that you understand your mission or your role as a parent. We've talked about this before, but if God is bringing us back to this, he's letting us look at Joseph, right? 
And some of you will say Joseph didn't do any wrong. Well, we don't know. There's some gaps in the story. For one, he was prideful. One, he was boasting. He was not boasting in God. He was boasting in himself. But even in this worst situation and where it looks like he's set up, he's being set up to be used for the next generation. Joseph had to be where he had to be so that he could do what he needed to do so that Israel could be saved so his family could be saved but it wasn't that just he saved his family he saved an entire kingdom so what would look like a tragedy or a travesty or a mistake because he had God's favor on his life and God favored him this is what you got to understand there is the favor of God is so powerful. It is more powerful than money. It is more, it will bring money. It is more power. The favor of God, you need the favor of God and the favor of God is activated. Once your character is activated, when your character is in place, when you are honoring God, when your face is towards the Lord, when you are leaning not into your own understanding, the favor of God will change a circumstance and a search situation around because the favor of God is going to bring his glory, right? I'm chosen. I'm adopted when we understand who we are in Christ Jesus. And so as we are looking at this story and we're understanding who and what's going on with him, Joseph has to go ahead of time, right? I, Joseph has to go ahead of time. Joseph has to, Joseph has to go ahead of time. He has to go ahead of them. He has to be in the position that he's positioned because there's a famine coming seven or eight years later, right? There's a famine coming every seven or eight years later and he has to be in position. And so everything that has happened, even though it seemed unlikely, even though it seemed crazy, God is working for his good. And so one of the, even if you don't have kids yet, right? Even if you don't have kids yet, one of the first things that I think I know we fail at is when we don't understand from the moment of conception that it is our mission as parents, right? To steward over our children. We will lord over our children. We will abuse our children with our mouths. We don't, um, we don't know, um, we don't know exactly. We don't know like exactly who our children are. We don't, um, stop and pray to see who our children are. We don't ask God for revelation into their purpose. Um, God will be trying to give us little ideas of who our children are, but because we're not sensitive and a lot of us, no one gave us or showed us that parenting was glorious right? No one really showed us that parenting was glorious. No one really showed us like a lot of times for some of us, especially if we were born in certain situations, no one made us, um, showed us how great parenting was like no one made parenting seem like it was the best thing in the world. And so a lot of us don't understand, like even like, um, even right now, especially for those of us that have had kids early or some of us that have, may have had parenting out of timing. Um, no one ever really showed us what the role in parenting was. And so some of us received parenting as being taxing or overwhelming or consuming or thought we were only to be their provider. A lot of us thought we were supposed to be taskmasters. We lord over our children. A lot of us never sought God's wisdom on who our children were in his mission and in his purpose. And so, and if, especially if sometimes a baby is born early, like we have a baby as a teen, baby is born out of wedlock. Um, that's an adverse situation. Sometimes we never seek the face of the Lord in those situations. If no one ever taught us to seek the face of the Lord about our children upon conception, before conception, Lord, show me this baby that's in my belly. Give me the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to raise them according to your purpose and to according to your plan. Then we wouldn't have our own plan and we would not have our own measure of success of what we think is successful where our kids are concerned. And most of us, our parents didn't know how to do that. And since our parents didn't know how to do that, most of us don't do it. Can I be honest with you? Most of our, y'all stay focused. Most of our mothers, right? Most, most of us as mothers, 
think we still need something else added to us as being a mother. I'm just being honest. Like we think we need something else added to us as being a mother, like being a mother is not enough, right? And so we don't even understand that being a mother and a father is a form of ministry. It's a part of the mission. And we will still be looking for other things to do as if being a mother is not enough. As if being a mother is not enough. Like as if our role of being a mother. So we look for committees and we look for validation and we look for community things to be attached to. And we look for all these other things. We're still trying to find our purpose in being a parent. But if God gave you, come on, Holy Spirit. If God gave you a child, that's a huge part of your purpose, right? That's a huge part of your purpose. And so we'll still be looking for other things to be validated and to be attached to. And you don't need nothing else when you're a mom, especially for my mothers who work full time. If you work full time and then you get off work, you church, and I'm going to give you some scriptures and how we lead our kids. And you already got church things. What else do you need to be added to you with outside of parenting? Like what else do you, what other purpose do you need added to you outside of parenting, right? What else do you need it? And because we don't slow down enough to pray and ask God about all the other things that we are attached to, we'll think um, that we need something else. Like we, we think we need something else and being a mom. Yeah. It's full-time ministry. It's full-time being a mother is full-time ministry. Being a father is full-time ministry. And so we'll start looking for other things to attach ourselves to, um, for validation, for importance. And God hasn't really asked us to be attaching it. When you work full-time, um, and you get off work. Um, the next assignment is to your family and to your children. And this society has taught us that's not important enough. And so we'll start grappling to be attached to other things, to committees, to conferences. And the most important thing that you can do is be a steward over the children that God has given you. And we miss this mission all the time. The assignment of the enemy will, likes for you to be all over the place. It likes for you to be attached to several different things. It, it, it's trying to build up to you that these things validate you and these things make you most important. We're supposed to serve in our community. We understand that. But a lot of times, a lot of what I do with the boys is serve as a family, right? And I can get into all of that. And I, that, that's a whole week of lesson. But I want to give you these scriptures so that you understand without a doubt that as parents, God was God. There's a certain thing that God has given you where parents are concerned. Right. And so I'm going to give you some scriptures. And I think when you hear the scriptures, you're going to understand this is what God has been saying to us all along about our parenting. And I've been trying a thousand different other things to get them to get it. And this is what God is saying. Like, this is what God is saying. And I told you, I parented children in two different phases in my life. Parenting now looks totally different, different for me than parenting as I got older, right? Parenting now looks totally different for me. I told you, I went back and I apologized to my older children. I repented. I'm like, I was not the best parent. <laughs> I was not the best parent. I was an okay parent. I loved you guys, but I didn't have the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that I have now. I didn't know how to pray for your purpose. I didn't understand your new unique personalities. And sometimes I was disciplining you for things that were life lessons that we needed to work under. I'm pretty sure when Joseph told them his dream that they thought he was being haughty, that he was thought he was being whatever. But in all reality, what he was at a young age, he was seeing himself in God. He was seeing his mission. God was showing him to who, who he was at a very young age. I remember my husband telling me he knew he was called to preach at seven. I, re I remember Josiah and that's why it's important what you name your kid. 
I remember one time Josiah and my husband were having a conversation and I was sitting in the bed and Josiah walks up and he flips the laundry basket over and he sat on top of the laundry basket and he looked at his daddy and he said, I'm the king, you're the prince. And his daddy said, you have this wrong. I'm the prince and you're, you're, you're the prince and I'm the king. But at a young age, he understood he would read about his name. I'm Josiah. I am called to be king. I'm called to be important. Judah has a very strong personality. He is going to lead. He is a leader. Instead of me harnessing his leadership and calling him disrespectful, I acknowledge his leadership and I reroute him and I explain to him, I explain to him, you will get to lead, but you will lead in the correct season. You're going to lead, but you will lead in a certain season. And so in this season, I have, I have sons who have musical gifts. I have sons who have entrepreneurship in them, right? Um, I have sons. Hi, Jojo. I have sons. I have sons who um, have uh, see life differently, and because they didn't see life the way that I saw life, I thought something was wrong. And even if you have a child that was born disabled, God has glory and purpose for that child. But if we don't ever spend time seeking the face of God, we will miss this. So let me give you some of the scriptures. Let's talk through this as parents to understand our mission was never to Lord over them. Our mission was never to determine what God's success was for them in their life. We were not put here to determine God's success for their life. That's not why we're here. God didn't put us here to give them a standard for living, right? Um, the assignment right now of the enemy on our kids is to have our kids busy and all over the place. And we think it's about its purpose, but it's not. Because if we have super busy children, they won't learn to properly hear from God like they need to, right? And so that's a whole nother thing. So even if you've not had kids yet, this is for you. Um, if you got nieces or nephews or other kids that you surrogate, this is for you. So I, let's get the understanding of this, right? Let's get the understanding of this so that we don't keep raising kids according to the world system or according to the world's way. And I know some of us came up and we came up good and we came up strong and we had great parents, but if we'll be real, there's still some defunct dysfunction to us. And the reason that there's some dysfunction to us is because our parents may not have really understood how to pray us into purpose, how to pray for us and what their job was to us and how important parenting was, the mission, the ministry of parenting. This world will think, make you think, that everything outside the family is more, more important when everything inside the family was so important. So Isaiah 54, 13, it says, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children, right? So in that within itself, we learn that our children are so important to the Lord and that they are precious gifts and God covers them in supernatural and divine protection, right? They have wealth, they have health, and they have the power of God inside them. And Isaiah 54 and 13 is encouraging us and saying to them, look, saying to us, look, the power of God is inside each and every child. The power of God is inside of us. And so we have to look to the word of God concerning our children, right? And if we don't get this or we don't understand that we have to look to the word of God concerning our children, then we will walk by sight instead of faith where our kids will concern. We'll walk by what we see. We'll parent them by what we see. We'll govern according to what we see. We'll go govern according to books. That, that are outside of the Bible, right? And I'm not saying there are not professionals that have techniques and have things that help us, but it still has to be based on the word. And so one of the first things that we learn is we need to confess the word over our children because when we confess the word over our children, it's like planting a seed. It's like planting a seed. Every time we are positive towards our children, it's like planting a seed. And once we plant that seed in them, it puts a demand upon the earth to produce a fruit.
right? I'm getting excited. I love teaching rest. I love teaching like this. It, it puts a demand upon the earth to produce a, a fruit. So whatever has been planted in our children has been planted by us. Right. They are little bitty us's. They are um, they are planted according to their environment. What's in our children is what we've given them. What's in us is what has been given to us. So whatever seed we plant in our children, whatever is being planted in our children, the seed, the word of God, there's going to be a demand upon it to grow. Right. That's why the scripture says train up a child in the way that they should go. And if they depart from it. Right. And so we got to be honest with ourselves. If we haven't been planting right seeds in our children, we, some of us have taught our children to be self self-sufficient. Some of our, some of us have taught our children We've mirrored these things. Some of us have taught our children to be independent of God. Some of us have taught our children the wrong measure of success. Some of us have taught our children um, more about sexuality than we should. Some of us have put emphasis on our bodies. And because we put emphasis on our bodies, our children have put emphasis on our body, right? And so every time we plant a spiritual seed in, in our hearts and theirs, it puts a demand on it so that they can grow. So only the only way God's promises regarding to your children can be broken down or can be broken is really by what you do. So we need to activate our children spiritually. We activate protection. We activate divine health. We activate wealth. We activate anointing. And I know some of you are like, I put these things in my children and they still did whatever they wanted to. And that's fine. But the scripture tells us they'll return just like the prodigal son, they'll return. And so we have to teach them along with prayer, right? And we have to stay confident in the word of God and the word of God is the seed that will not return void, but it will prosper in the places in which it's been planted. That's Isaiah 55 and 11. The word of God is an incorruptible seed and it'll never perish. That's first Peter one and 23, right? So even when you see your kids struggling spiritually, when your prayers are righteous and when your prayers are fervent, they're going to avail much. That's James 5 and 16. So what has God said to us as parents that we should, the promises that we should believe God and what is the thing that we can do so that we fulfill our mission as parents is be the example. <laughs> You, you, you gotta be, you gotta be, you can, you gotta be the example. And every scripture that I read, right? Every scripture that I read was tied to how we act. Our children will be most successful based on how we act, our relationship with God, how we act in the things of God. So Isaiah 54 and 13 says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and grace shall be their peace. Well, who's doing the teaching? Who's doing the teaching? And we have to ask ourselves, oh my God, what have I been teaching my children? Do I teach them to trust you? Do I teach them to depend on you? Um, am I just teaching them to be workaholics? Do I teach them to worship you? Do I teach them to serve you? Have I taught them to love, to, to, to I love you? Have I taught them that? Um, Isaiah 59 and 21, it says, and as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon you and my words that I've put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouth of your offspring or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. So if we don't look, leave a generational legacy, the, the, the most powerful generational legacy that we leave our kids is the covenant with God, the spirit of God, the relationship with God, right? That's the most powerful legacy that we're leaving them, right? So if the words are in my mouth, right? That the words are in my mouth, then the words will be in their mouth. And then the words will be in the generation of generations, right? Psalms 102 and 28, the children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before. Well, how do our children get established? Our children get established because we are established. Our children get established because we are established, right? 
Psalms 120, 12, 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offsprings will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. So I, y'all know I like to be personal because we get ready to wrap this up. My older generation of sons have an amazing work ethic. They do. And they have some really amazing principles where God is concerned. Um, I, as they got older, we taught them how to have a relationship with God. I remember when my husband died, one of the most significant things all of my sons said was, I miss the wisdom of dad. And the wisdom of dad came from the wisdom of God, right? They were like, we miss dad's wisdom. Every time we would get into a crisis, they would say, um, I wish daddy was here so that he could give us wisdom. So I began to pray, Lord, give me the wisdom for my sons as their father had so that I am able to be to them, be, be what they need. Now, my older sons are men. They're 27, 25 and 23. They are men. They are grown men. When your son gets of age, he is a grown man. It is not your job as his mother to Lord over him. And so my relationship with them as 27, 25 and 23 is not the same. I am not parenting them like I am this 15 and 10 year old, right? I am, I am, I am um, more of advice. I am more um, different with them. I still pray for them. I still talk to them about God, but my relationship with them transition and change. So I had to begin to ask God to give me the wisdom for them in their latter ages. I needed the wisdom. I needed godly wisdom. I needed guidance and structure because they are all boys and I am a lady, right? And so I had to begin to ask God the, for the wisdom to raise them in this season because we are in a different season and then let me lead them by um, example, right? We have not been very intentional in those prayers for parenting because we just thought parenting was parenting. When God is trying to tell us, no, I need you to be a steward over your child. I'm also telling you and teaching you that it's in your mouth, it's in your actions, it's in your deeds. So now in my latter parenting, Josiah and Judah have a different relationship um, as, as where God is concerned because they've seen my passion for God, Ooh. not out of duty. They've seen my passion for God. They've seen me choose God above all things. They've seen my passion for God and they've seen my mistakes. I've allowed them to also see my mistakes in God, right? The things that I've made, I've been very transparent in my mistakes, in my failures, in the things that I've done wrong. And they've seen and witnessed the grace of God in my life. And they've seen the mercy of God. And they've seen me trust God at a complete different, different level. And I had to grow into this and I had to understand. And I remember um, recently I was having a conversation with Judah and somebody was talking to him about what are you going to be when you grow up and all this other stuff. And he said, I, it doesn't matter, mother, I'm going to work for you. <laughs> like, I'm going to work for you. Like, I'm going to work for you. I'm going to work in kingdom with you. And when he was telling me he's going to work in kingdom with me, I began to understood, stand more of what he was saying to me, right? He says, I'm going to work kingdom with you mother because I'm teaching them now about kingdom and they're learning kingdom from me and because the word of God is in my mouth it's operating different and so I'm seeing them trust God earlier at an early age I'm seeing them trust God and I'm trusting God to know that my older sons are gonna work out their purpose because I'm trusting the peace of God and that the seeds that have been planted in them so Lakeisha, what if I didn't plant good seeds in my children? You can start planting seeds now. You can start planting seeds now. You can change it. They're still your children. And there is a divine connection when God gives you children. So if you were not a good example, if you did not, you can plant seeds. You can plant seeds now. I am learning how that these are not, the, the, I am not, these children were given to me as a gift. I am learning that I am just to steward over them. I'm not to lord over them. 
I am learning to be sensitive to the God in them. And the reason that I'm learning to be sensitive to the God in them is because they hear from God. They hear from God. My sons hear from God. And so I am, especially as Josiah is turning 15, I'm letting him lead. I don't make a lot of decisions for Josiah unless I feel like he's outside boundaries or the will of God. Then I'll step in as a parent. But I allow, I know he hears from God because I'm teaching him to hear from God, right? I'm teaching him. I'm learning. I'm teaching him. But I didn't have this wisdom. It wasn't until I began to study the scripture. Like, and look, Isaiah 44, 3 and 5, it says, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. They shall spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. This one will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call on the name of Jacob and another will write on his hand, the Lord's and name himself by the name of Israel. I'm pouring out my spirit on your children, right? I'm pouring them out. I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with your children. Your offspring will be known among the nations. And he's saying to them how this happens, right? How this happens is that you walk in righteousness and you walk in integrity. Proverbs 20 and seven says the righteous who walks in his, in, in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. Man, that's powerful. The righteous who walk in integrity, blessed are their children after. So our responsibility and our mission is to be the example. And you got to ask yourself, am I really being an example for my children? Right? Am I really not, not religiously, not, am I teaching them how to have a relationship with God by being the relation, showing them what a relationship with God looks like? Like showing them what a relationship with God looks like. And I still discipline and I do all of that, right? We talked about that the other week, but am I showing them? Proverbs 14, 26, in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. Well, if my fear is in the Lord, then, and then I'm going to have strong confidence in the God in their life. And my children are always going to have refuge. I don't have to worry over my children. My children are always going to be in safety, right? And so we see in Joseph's life that he was marked by purpose. And I gave you Joseph so that you could understand every child you have is marked by purpose. Every child you have is marked by God's purpose for them. You need to understand that. I don't care what they're acting like. I don't care that the doctor told you ADHD. I don't care that the doctor told you they had. I, I don't care what. Every child you have is marked about pur by purpose. So you need to begin to pray and ask God, what is the purpose for me in my child's life? And as a parent, understand that your ministry as a parent is greater than anything because whatever you're teaching them, whatever seeds you're planting in them, whatever you're leaving about it. I taught my older children how to work be workaholics. I did. They learned their work ethic from me. They work hard. They grind hard. They hustle hard. I did not teach them how to rest. I did not teach them how important the Sabbath is. I did not teach them how to yield properly to the Holy Spirit and let God direct your life. I taught them about how, what it looks like to be a good wife, but I did not teach them what it looks like to be a good wife all the way submitted to God, right? Now my lessons look a little bit differently because I understand how much it, how important it is that God that I let God lead me in my parenting because if I'm walking in his righteousness and in integrity, all my children are going to be blessed. Let me give you these last two scriptures, Deuteronomy four and 40. Therefore you shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land that the Lord, your God is giving you. And so if you've planted any seeds in your children, that were not according to kingdom, that are not according to the word, pluck those seeds up, uproot them, cut them out. Lord, repent of them. Lord, I'm plucking up every seed. I'm plucking up every negative word I ever spoke. I'm plucking up every negative seed that is ever planted. I'm plucking up, plucking up every negative word that I ever let somebody speak over my children. My children are not disabled. They are not bad. My children will honor you. Um, Jeremiah 32 and 39 says, I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and the good of their children after them. If I learn the one heart and the one way, 
It's going to be good for my children after them, right? Well, it's going to be good. And so I just admonish you to repent. I just ask you to ask the Holy Spirit more. Give me more information about my children. Don't think that your parenting is not enough. You ain't got to be in a whole bunch of stuff. You got enough ministry in your children within itself. Ask God to show you how to be a better parent. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom for the children that you have so that you will not parent according to culture, according to what you thought was successful. Um, ask God to give you the wisdom for your children. Stop measuring them. Stop measuring their success by the world's success. Stop measuring the standard by um, your friends. Don't compare them to other people's kids. Do not compare them to other people's kids. It's not fair. Don't compare their success by your success. It's not fair. Ask God for wisdom for the child that he has given you so that you could walk into the fullness of, and your kids could walk into the fullness of who they were called to be in Christ Jesus. And God will give you a wisdom for your children like never before. I promise he will. I'm going to pray for you. He will give you a wisdom. God will give you the wisdom that you need for your children. Start with a repent and then let's pluck up the old seeds. And let's begin to plant new seeds. Father God, I thank you for your people today. I thank you for this wisdom today. I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for love. I thank you, Father God, for the mission in parenting. I thank you that our eyes are open so that we could see. Father, forgive us for all the negative seeds we planted. Pluck them up. Uproot them. We cast them back to the pits of hell from which it came. And Lord God, we thank you for giving us revelation. Let us see each child individually, Lord God. Show us their purpose. Show us the call on their life. And then show us how to be better stewards over them, Lord God. Give us the grace, the support, Lord God. Let us not lord over them. Let us not make anything up. Let us not make anything up. Let us not measure them by this world's success. Let us measure them by Jesus' success. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's going to be the very first example that you can be to your children. Accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm going to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the very first example that you can lead your children. If you'll accept, them, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you'll lead your kids into a different place. And God will be what he needs to be for your children. I'm believing for you. So we'll do a special live. Josiah and Judah and I will do a special live this weekend for you. Um, and just letting you see them as children and letting you see some transparency. We'll do something special for you guys this weekend. We may do it Saturday morning and just talk to you from our heart and let them talk to you um, about just being children and what it's like for them to be children and what it's what some of the things that they don't like in parenting and some of the things that they feel like they need from their parents. I'll let them share their heart with you as well. I love y'all so much. I'll see y'all back here in the morning. We're going to wrap up this week, the mission, and we're going to tie this all in together. And you're going to understand more of what God was saying. I'll see y'all back here in the morning. Make sure you share the devotion. Hey, won't you consider being a partner with us, partnering with the ministry so we can get the gospel throughout the world, partnering with the ministry so we can serve more poor, partnering with the ministry so that we can help more people in prison, partnering with the ministry so we can get more families healed, set free. That's part of the mission, partnering with this one ministry so we can teach more women entrepreneurship. Consider partnering with us. You can log on to the website, Lakeisha M. Johnson. Dot com. I thank you. I love you. I bless you. I praise God for you. I magnify God for you. I am so grateful for you. You are glorious. You are redeemed and you are set free. And today you walk as the blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Peace.